<laughs> Hello, my name is Georgia and today we are going to be doing a plaiting demo and our model today is seven year old Tebby. Um, she's a mare by the Stallion Quarterback. Um, she's training medium and I think she's quite excited to be our model today. So here we go. <laughs> First off, I make sure the mane is nicely brushed so there's no knots and it's also easier to plait a nicely washed mane um, because greasy, I mean some people prefer to plait a greasy mane but I find it much much harder. Um, I find if it's um, clean then you get a bit more volume in the plaits. Um, so I'd like to say just start off by brushing it through, make sure there's no knots and I usually go for just one of these standard standard combs and I just go through. I, I always start at the top, some people like to start at the bottom but I like to start at the top by the ears and I'll literally just go through and I will section <laughs> <laughs> to me that's not helpful. Um, I just go through and I section out the plaits. I usually go for a comb and a half in width for the plait. I find that gives a nice big like golf ball plait like they say the Dutch plaits. Um, and obviously she's got quite a thick mane as well so we'll get some nice big plaits. So I just go through, so that's one. That's one. And I literally just separate it out, make sure you get a nice parting like you would when you're brushing your hair. And I just separate it across using the comb. And then I get my band, which is in my pocket. And I say, I go through and I separate out the plaits first. I don't like do them each individually. Um, so then we go on to the next one. So you got the one and then a half. Brush it through and you separate it out. So, as you see already, that's going to be quite a nice big thick flat. Yeah. Obviously, it always helps if your horse likes to stand still. <laughs> so we'll just keep going all the way down the main. Like that, I haven't quite got And I also, some people say you need to have, you know, between seven and nine plaits an odd number, but I don't follow that rule and I just go with, if you get to the bottom, like here, I'm probably not going to have enough to fit two full size plaits. So what I'll do is I'll just sort of pick a halfway point and I'll just separate it there. Because the thing is, the plaits at the bottom, your hands are covering it mainly anyway. So it's not too much of an issue they're slightly different size <laughs> to the other ones. So like I say, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got eight there. But like I say, it really doesn't matter. Some horse, some horses you'll get more plaits. Um, other horses, obviously with slightly shorter necks, um, you'll get less plaits. So once I've separated them all out like that and I'm happy with all the sizing of them, I grab my spray and I usually use the quick braid which you can get from the most tack shops. Um, I find this really good, it's really sticky um, so that you know if you're out all day competing, really keeps the plaits in place. And also like if you get like the little wispy bits on the top here, they're really good for securing those and getting them into the plait. So 
like I say, I don't use too much of the spray because it is really good stuff, so you don't need to use too much of it. So I just spray, I don't spray the whole lot of um, mane you've got separated, I literally just spray like down by the roots. Because I find once I've sprayed it, I just run my hands down and just sort of grab in those wispy bits at the top, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> and then what I do is I obviously separate it into three. And the trick is with creating these um, Dutch plaits, as they call them, is keeping the top of the plait really loose. So split it into three. You're going to bring your hair over like you would normally, but you're not going to place it. You're not going to pull it too tight. You're literally just going to bring it over and place it over the other strand. So you've got your that, and that's what creates the lift and the, the bigness of the plait as well. So then you just again cross over your next bit of hair, and then gradually. As you start coming down the plait, you just start to pull the hair a little bit tighter to make it more secure. Because obviously if you keep the whole plait really loose, then obviously it's going to be loose and it's probably going to come out. So once I get to near the bottom, what I do, there's loads of different ways of doing this, but this is just what I find easiest. I fold over the bottom. And then I fold it back on itself. So then you've got like a nice end. You haven't got any bits sticking out. And then I just get my band and I just keep wrapping it round until you get that. So that's basically your beginning of your plait. Um, so then obviously when you think about when you roll it up and you're like sewing it in, because I sew, I don't band my plaits in. If, <laughs> if we just think about it, that's kind of what the end, end product will look like. So like I say, I, I sew, I section all my plaits out first, then I plait them all down, and then I sew them all in. I don't do each. Some people like to do, you know, they'll do, like separate it out, then they'll plait it, and then they'll sew it in straight away, but I prefer to just do it all, all in like different stages. So then we'll go on to the next one. Again, just spraying the roots, and then just bringing Lotion, lotion down towards the ends and then you separate into the three so again you just keep the first you're literally just placing the hair over the first the first time you cross it so it's like that and then you just start plaiting like normal like I say as you get further down the plait you just start putting a bit more tension on the strands to create a slightly tighter plait So again, when we get to the bottom, I'm going to fold it just over the end, and then you fold the hair back on itself. So then you've got your little ball on the end, and then you just band it over again. Yeah. And sort of once you get going, it's it's quite a quick way of of plaiting, I find. Again, separate into three. Obviously, the hair in the middle here is starting to get really thick, so this is where you'll see the biggest and the bulkiest plaits. So you just cross it over. Now you just gradually just start putting a bit more tension. Turn. you can't fit any more strands in without them poking out fold over the end this is probably the bit that's the hardest to master it took me years and years and years and I actually learned off my mum <laughs> sometimes I still don't get it and I have to redo the plait but that's fine and when I'm plaiting for a show I usually allow an hour so then I hate rushing and plaiting because it's just the worst thing um, so I allow an hour because then if you do find when you've plaited them all down and you see one that looks a little bit dodgy then you can just redo it and then I'm one of those people if I have a dodgy plait in my mind it, it, it freaks me out so I've got to make sure they're all perfect before we start sewing them up. You've plaited all the plaits down and you're happy with them all. Um, you just need to sew a needle um, 
no, that's not right, you need to thread a needle, um, getting my words in a muddle, and I, I thread it so that you have um, like two pieces of, of um, thread, and then just like a knot at the bottom. Um, I find it's basically, it's, it saves half the time if you've got two strands of the thread, and it keeps the platen a bit more secure. And obviously if you're at a show all day and you've got two tests to do, you know, there's a chance they might be rubbing their plaits. So I try and do the two strands to keep it much more secure and, um, yeah, keeps the plaits nicely in place. Especially, like you say, she's got quite a thick mane as well. Um, so the more, like, stable you can make the plait, obviously when she's trotting around it's not going to be wobbling around either. And then I just start up at the top. Just pop that needle in there a second, just while I roll it up. So I basically, it's, I just start at the bottom and I literally just roll the plait up back into itself. So sort of think about like folding it in half and then just like keep folding it in half until you can't fold any more. And then that's what makes the, the golf ball shape. So now I will grab my, my needle and I always go from the bottom. So you go from the bottom up to the top. Put it nice and tight so that your knot's at the bottom and it's not going to come through. And I basically just keep going up and down on myself until you feel that the plait is really secure. So it depends, like her mane's quite thick so you need to sew up and down quite a few times. Um, horses with slightly like finer manes and thinner manes, obviously you don't need to sew up and down quite so many times. And I always finish like with a sew up. So then when you go to cut the thread, the thread's at the top and it's not at the bottom. So I say that feels secure, it looks a nice shape. So now I'll literally just grab my scissors and we're just going to do exactly the same with the next, um, the next plait. You just start at the bottom and you just roll it up into itself until you get your nice golf ball shape. So again that feels like it's secure and then I'll just grab my needle again and again you just start from the bottom and you, ju you just need to basically go like through the middle of the plait up to the top um, sometimes you might hit quite a thick bit like obviously like where the, the rubber from the band is up in there somewhere so don't worry about that and like I say now <laughs> Toby's getting bored um, you just keep going up and down until you feel that the plait is secure enough so like this one this already feels really secure so I'm just going to go up now and then cut the thread. And obviously be careful not to snip your mane. <laughs> I've done that before and ended up with a chunk of mane missing. So you just have to be, uh, you just have to be really careful. So we're just gonna, <laughs> same again. Just roll the plait up until it feels like it's in a nice golf ball shape and I'll just grab the needle. Tibby, that's not very helpful. And again, just from the bottom to the top. Just keep going up and down. Like I say this one now feels a little bit more wobbly, so I'm actually just going to go up and down another time. Do that. Until it's nice and secure. And then again, we just grab our scissors. And like I say, you can see a few um, like wispy bits here again. I don't worry too much about those. At the end, I usually just get some hairspray and I just spray them down. Um, but like I say, at this point, you know, don't worry too much about those. As you can see, we've sewn all the plaits in. Toby's trying to eat my hair, which is not very helpful. Um, I'm pretty happy with these. Um, her mane's pretty good at the minute because there's no gaps. Obviously, I'm a bit mean with my horses in the winter. I won't put neck neck covers on them, um, so we don't have the issue of having like big bald patches in the mane. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really happy with these. are the plaits completed. 
And um, obviously, like I say, I usually, if I'm going to be going to a show, I'll just put some hairspray on the, the really, really, the really wispy bits. Um, and yeah, usually I just plait down the, the forelock as well. Some people prefer not to plait the forelock. It's a bit of a personal preference thing. I always do, unless I'm putting like ears on, flower veils. Um, and to do the, the front plait is literally just, I literally just plait it down and I fold it in half and, and sew it up. So I unplait the, the plaits, I just grab my scissors and I've not made it very easy for myself using <laughs> black thread on a black mane. Um, but it is, it is doable as long as the horse doesn't move around too much. So I just grab a box. But if I just undo one of these ones here. So if you look underneath, you can see you can see here where I've sewn up and down through the plait. So I literally just grab my scissors and I'm going to cut one of those. Try not cut the main. And then, and then basically that's your plait unraveled again. And then I just cut the band. And then I just. And then you get your nice afro mane as if you've had a little perm. <laughs> so that's how we unplait them.